friends, welcome to my YouTube channel, Kiddo Coder. My name is Rion and this is my first video on YouTube. In this video, we are going to code using a framework called MIT Scratch. Before we get into coding, I just want to share a little bit about me. I'm a grade 4 student. I love playing hockey. Of course, what's more than hockey for a Canadian? I couldn't join my hockey practice this year, but my dad and I are planning to make an ice rink in our backyard. I'll share the making in a month with you guys. I also enjoy programming. I feel amazing when I start drawing my imagination on the coding canvas, and the result thrills me. Scratch is a programming language and online community where everyone can program and share interactive media such as stories, games, and animation with people from all over the world. Scratch is designed specially for ages 8 to 16, but it is used by people of all ages. Millions of people are creating Scratch projects in a wide variety of settings. When people learn to code in Scratch, they learn important strategies for solving problems, designing projects, and communicating ideas. Sounds interesting? Alright friends, are you ready? Let's scratch! Alright friends, in today's video we'll learn to code analog stopwatch and learn circular motion and angle of rotation. So I'm back and we're on Google right now, so it doesn't look like much right now. Uh, but we'll just get started. So today's lesson is going to be about making a timer and learning what angle of rotation is. So let's get started. So first, I know I have the bookmark here, but you will have to search MIT. I already have it here, but scratch as you can see. So I've clicked on that and it's the first link. Scratch.mit.com add you so once I click on that so right now this is the page where you have no account because first when you get in there you have to make an account so you if you're new when you don't have an account you press join scratch and you can make your own account but since I already have an account or some people also already have an account they press sign in and you can just sign into their account Okay, so now that we're all in, if you, we want to make a new project, we would need to press create right here. So once I've pressed create, it would make a new project, which lets us do new things and wouldn't like make it in some other place. So this is the starting board. And in the starting board, there's a sprite. And the backdrop. So those are the first things I'll teach you. And now there's also just a coding place to code and put all these blocks: motion, look, sound, events, so on. So I'll first I'll teach you scratch and um, the sprite and backdrop. So for the sprite, so for the straight sprite, there's a choose sprite, a paint sprite. A uh, surprise which just gives you a random sprite so you water around and this is where when you get your sprite you can code them by pressing on them and then you could just code uh, each one and you could also just delete them like that so right now I don't need these sprites and backdrop same thing choose a backdrop paint surprise there's also upload backdrop in both of these like upload sprite so that means you could upload it from the web or something so right now I'm just going to upload backdrop. Uh, I already have a clock. See right here, clock. But you you can you can get it off the web. I'm just gonna click that and open. So now look at my backdrop. It's like that. So now that it's in the middle, okay. Now I need a sprite. So I'm going to paint a sprite this time for the clock hand. So once I do this, so here we have a blank sheet of paper. So in that blank sheet of paper, 
I am going to take one, just one line. You can make it any color here. There is a color. So if we make the brightness 100, we could see all the colors. And we could choose it to any color that we want. Right now, I want red. I could change the saturation and brightness, but I already like how it is. So I'm going to take my yellow um, red line, I mean, and I'm going to just press in the middle here and go straight. And try to make it straight. We can make it straight after also. So now that we've gone that, I press this. So now that we can edit it. So I think it's straight. Let's just make it straight for sure. There we go. Now it's straight. So now that we have it straight, we could change this right here. So I want it to stay in the middle of everything. So in the always the middle will always be the x will always be 0 and the y will also always be 0. I know it looks a little off, but that's actually the real middle. So, because I always wanted to just stay in the middle, you will always need this block in every single code you would make in Scratch. You will need this block. So, when the person starts it, it would actually work. That's what the block is for. Okay, now I put go to zero, zero when clicked. Okay, so now when I do this, when I press this, it will go to the middle. So, because there's no code, it just starts and stops. Nothing happens. So, we need to make the code to make it turn. So, I would do this. Because we want this to go forever until the person who is, like, rotate forever, until the person who is trying to work with the timer uh, presses stop. So, we would do this and go to control. There's this forever block. So that com keeps on repeating what's ever inside it. Okay, so now we want it to turn. Okay, so so this is where the angle of rotation comes from. So let's just switch to my PowerPoint. Okay, I'm in the PowerPoint, and we need this clock hand to move from 12 to 1 to 2 to 3 and so on. That's called circular motion. And to make circular motion work, you need the angle of rotation. In mathematics, the angle of rotation is a measurement of the angle of that a figure is rotated about a fixed point, often the center of a circle, in this case, the center of our clock. We have our first quiz. If a hand moves around the clock once, what is the angle of rotation? You have five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. It's 360 degrees. 360 degrees because a circle is 360 degrees. Quiz number two. How many times does a hand need to move inside a clock? 12 times, but this is kind of tricky, so it's okay if you got it right, because sometimes you want it to move 60 times, or sometimes you want it to move 12. Because we need to make it simple, we just made it 12. To calculate the angle of rotation, you using division, you would take the amount a circle the amount of a the angle of a circle and the amount of times you want your hand to move around the clock and you would divide those two and in this case 360 divided by 12 equals 30 if you want to do it using 60 you would just change the, the 12 into 60 so 360 divided by 60 which equals 6 so that's what the angle of rotation is. We're back in scratch. So now that we know what the angle of rotation is, and we know we want to move it 12 times each, 
So I would put this to 30. Okay, so now it'll turn 30 degrees. So when we start it, it'll go 30 degrees each time, but it's going a little too fast. So when you go in, we need to go into control, and there's this wait one second. Be, that just makes you wait one second and one second or second, and then it would do whatever you wrote beneath it. Beneath it. So I will put this on top. Now it'll go. See, nice, nice, nice. So now that we, when we stop it. This will just stay like this. It won't be nice. See, it just keeps on going from there. So we also needed to just, once we press start, it, we needed to restart. So when we turn it all the way to straight here, that is 90 degrees. A 90 degrees angle is straight. It's also called a right angle. So because we don't, all, we don't want that to go forever, we would go to events, take that, and now we would point direction 90 degrees. So now when we start it each time, it would point back to 90 degrees, and it would be easy. But sometimes it keep, just keeps on going, keeps on going more than 12. So the person who's trying to use the timer can't remember what, how much time it took since the guy started it. So we would need to make something right up here that would tell how much time it taken. So for that, you would need to go to variables. Ah, uh, you can make a variable, but I just wanna make. I just wanna make myself. I just wanna rename my variable to make it easier for me. So rename my variable into time. Er. So there we go. Let me just put my timer on. There's here, right up here. There's your variables, and then you could select if you want them on or off. I want this on, so I'm going to click this. And now it is up here, and it'll show. Right now, once you click start, it doesn't do anything. So for that, you would need to go from. So actually, we could just put it in the same code right there. So let me go back here. And we could change the timer by one each second. So I could put this right here. If you want to do milliseconds for anything, that would be really hard because you, you, need, you would need a lot more calculations to make it correct. And just every for everything, even seconds and milliseconds, you will never get the time like right dead on. Because each of these blocks of code takes some time and we don't know what that time is. So now that, so see, so now one, two, three, it works now. But we also need it, see, it starts from four if we, again, if we press the flag, it just starts from four again. So we need to fix that. So it's kind of like this, we don't want that to go forever just at the start. We would go to events, get your, whatever you would call the start, like the start. Okay, and now you would need to go back here and set timer, not change timer. Here I put change timer, because each time you would need to change the timer by one. This time you would need to just set it to one, uh, zero. So now that now if we see, it's a timer, it works. That's how you make the timer, but you also want to send it off to people, share it to your friends, make it online, okay? So first, I would go to my, all of my projects, but you could just do it from here also. So up here, there's a share button, and you could just make it your title right here. So I'm going to call this, stop watch I'm gonna call it stopwatch right there that's the name of it so let me just go to all my projects so from here if we look right here there's instructions and credits so who told you how to make it and how to use it we don't need any of these right now 
maybe notes and credits, but not instructions because you literally just press the start button and it goes. So now we've named it stopwatch here. So you could turn commenting off. You could turn commenting off or on. But once you've named it and you want to share it off to everyone, your friends online, it would share to everyone. So like so it's up here there's something a message that says this project is not shared so you can only see it click share to let everyone see it now there's this button right here so once you click that button it goes online so let's just see see that right now I'm just gonna click share so now it's online everybody could comment and like well remix remix means that you could just get a copy of someone's and you have to change it and then you can make your own so now if you want to share it to your friends and your friends don't know how to there's also this button right here called copy link so if you press this copy link you could just copy the link right here you, there's this button right here and then you could paste it off somewhere like give it to your friends so I'm just gonna paste it in Google. Just right, right there. So now once we press enter, it goes to your project. So you could do that. So now you've shared it off and at one point you would maybe wanna change it. So there's this button called see inside. So you could press see inside and then you could change everything. It'll still be online but it will keep it would it would save that change and it would leave it off to other people so let me just go back into here so that's how you make your first project right now we've made a timer so that's all for today's video so today we've learned to make a timer and what the angle of rotation is so next so i'm gonna paste this the link of this project in the description below i would also like if you have any questions or suggestions for the next video you would type them in the scratch comments or the youtube comments down there so if you like this video, please subscribe and stay tuned for more exciting Kiddo Coder videos. That's all for today. Bye.